everyone, welcome back to the Minds of an Interior Designer. Today I am joined by the fabulous Will, who is a home design stylist for John Lewis. So please give a warm welcome to Will. Hello, thank you for having Hi, me. Hi, you're okay. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. It's so nice to have you on. I'm made up to have you on, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, thank you. It's nice to nice to meet you. Oh, good. Um, so basically, for anyone who doesn't know you, tell us a bit about the journey of you, maybe before you actually got to John Lewis, so your background and everything like that. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm a home stylist at John Lewis now, but before then, my background was actually more in writing. So I did my degree in literature and I did a master's in literature and I worked in as a, like a copywriter for a few years um, but before I kind of decided to go into that, I was always kind of torn between whether to do design and whether to do writing, and both creative, but kind of different, like flex different muscles, I suppose. Um, so I worked in writing for a few years and then I thought, nah, <laughs> I need to get back into like design and homeware. So um, I, John Lewis were opening in Leeds, we've not been open very long, and I saw there a job for a home stylist going and I thought that sounds my cup of tea um so I applied and got the job and I've been doing that ever since oh wow so did you feel like the writing was definitely not your creative side you needed something a bit more it was um and I still love writing and I love reading and uh, like I love words um I just wanted to kind of do more hands-on um sort of creativity um not as much desk work and actually when I was working as a writer way before pandemic I was working from home <laughs> uh, so I was a bit um, kind of ahead of my time before uh, the pandemic <laughs> dropped. but that didn't suit me obviously I forced back into it for a few years but um, I wanted to kind of work with people and um, get more into the touchy feeling side of kind of creativity which for me home design is. Yeah well yeah your role especially is definitely hands-on. Yeah absolutely it is. Yeah. So when did John Lewis in the one you work in open then when was that? So that was six years ago now. Well, it'll be seven years this year, but yeah, I've worked there for uh, just over six years. Oh, wow. So tell us more about the role, what you do for anyone who might know. So I do appointments for people that are wanting to kind of either just refresh or fully redecorate the home. So we do kind of a combination of virtual appointments, which really took off, obviously, during the pandemic. Um, in-store appointments, which are kind of more, you come and meet us in-store, we... Um, we show you around we kind of start building a look there and then and then we also do home visit appointments as well where we can like visit people's homes we'll put a brief together and then we'll put kind of like a scheme together uh, room by room and present that back to the customer um so yeah it's a very flexible sort of interior design service and what i think kind of differentiates it from um a normal interior design service is that we don't work with our own tastes so you don't necessarily buy into you can but you don't necessarily buy into like or I'll buy Will's style. It's kind of I work to help you find your style and then yeah. bring that to life in your own home, which is what I love to do. Yeah, that's so that's so true because you, sometimes you find if you go to a specific designer, it's very much you go yeah. to them for their style. As where when it comes yeah, to right. when it comes to you and um, John Lewis, you get to be a like your role as a stylist. So you must enjoy right. that side. Do you find that a really good element of the role to be able to? diversify different customer needs yeah and I think what I love most about it is uh, kind of going on a journey with the customer so they might come to me and not have any idea of what their own style is but obviously we all kind of respond to color in a certain way or um, I kind of like really get into the uh, getting down to the heart of what customers really like so we might spend a lot of time first um, I might expect uh, sorry, spend time uh, getting to know them quite a lot um, and understanding kind of what colours they respond to or what just makes them happy. Um, and then I'll work to build on that and help them bring that to life in, in their own home. So it's not necessarily like they might come to me and say, I really love a Scandi style or um, I really want your taste kind of brings life in my home. It's I'll, I'll kind of help them shape their own, yeah. um, which is what I really love. Yeah, it sounds, a re- to be fair, I didn't even know all the extent that you go to, so it is a really personal service. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And obviously not everyone kind of needs that. Some people do have like a strong sense of their own style and might just help, uh, need help navigating kind of that, or they might not have time to kind of do um, their own move or doing all their own research. But yeah, it's just a very flexible service. We'll do kind of whatever's best for each person. Yeah, how do you help people who 
don't have a clue basically what's your way about <laughs> it <laughs> um I generally start with color obviously um I kind of work a lot with color in my own um, home but I just think it's you have such a personal response to color um and whether that's kind of a neutral palette or, or whatever that's fine um but I kind of start to like I just kind of like spam the colors out in front of them say what do you absolutely love don't think about your home don't think about kind of what your home could look like or what magazine photos you've seen kind of tell me what makes you happy um, and they'll start pointing out some colors um, and like I said that might be a stone color or it might be a gray and that that's fine um, but I kind of want to get to that the heart of it first um, and what kind of makes people tick and then can we go into the more specifics of what you can do with your walls what sofa you can have that sort of thing um but yeah that's that's how I usually approach it oh that's boss to be fair I feel like naturally people do think picking a colour oh that is my home is where I love the way yeah. you actually go about it on a more personal level because I think I'm terrible for that if I see a scheme I'm like oh no I want that to be my vibe but really it is good to see what colour represents you do you find people are a bit like scared by that process they are, yeah, but I suppose what I find kind of the magic is that some people say, oh, I absolutely love that citrusy colour, that's what um, that's what really makes me happy and I wear a lot of it. I couldn't have that at home, but I'm like, why not? <laughs> yeah. If that's what makes you happy, you can have it at home. And of course, like then the skill, I suppose, of a designer is, we might not do that on all walls because it might look luminous and you might never be able to sleep again, but where can <laughs> we get that into your home? Um, so you've got like those splashes of things that make you really happy. Yeah. Oh, that's boss. Well, you're quite a colourful person. You have like the yeah. most amazing colourful home, but it just works. So do you, would you say that's your personal style? Yeah, I would. Um, I think what surprises people is I do kind of like when I'm looking at other people's homes, I do love like neutral interiors as well and how kind of you have to work a lot with texture in those sort of spaces to make it interesting and all that minutia. But um I, I really like colour and I love kind of greens and I love earthy tones. But as as well as what you love, you've kind of got to go with what suits your home. Yeah. Um, and I live in kind of just a small flat that doesn't have much natural light. So when I do colours like neutrals or deep earthy tones, um, they tend to look quite flat. So I've learned as I've lived here for a few years that I need kind of bright colours to make this place interesting. Yeah. Um, and it is an old converted kind of flat, but there's not there's not like a fireplace, there's not cornicing, do you know, like there's no original features. So I use colour to make it interesting. Um, yeah. And that's, I've learned that's what suits suits the flat and suits me. Yeah, just a bit of experimentation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What are you finding about what you're just saying then? So what advice do you give to people who can't, who have very small space and not a lot of light? If they want to use colour, what's the best bet? So I think often you have to kind of lean into what the light levels of a home are rather than fighting it. So, I mean, I've, I've learned from me. <laughs> um, I wanted to go through, like, I want to be really cool and pet that sort of phase. And I, I painted my room in, like, stone colour, which is a colour that I love, like the really warm neutrals. But it just did not respond well to the light of the flat and it looked really yellow and really murky. Um and then the same thing with if, if all the walls in here were just white, I think it would look really dull because it doesn't have that natural light to illuminate it. So you kind of just have to go with what the light offers you. So if you have got kind of like deeper light levels, go deeper or go brighter. So I've been able to go kind of a bit more intense with colour. So quite bright, like the walls in here. I'm sat in my living room, uh, if you're just listening on the podcast. <laughs> um, the walls in here are quite like a bright green. Um, but in a really bright room this might be too much but because there's not that natural light illuminating it it kind of naturally gets knocked back a little bit so if you are in a darker space a small space you can afford to either just run with it and go kind of deep and moody and accept that it'll perhaps be its best on a night when you close the curtains um which actually my home always is um or you can actually go brighter than you might normally because it just naturally gets knocked back by the light levels if that yeah. makes any sense yeah well it does to me I hope it, it oh, will to everyone yeah. <laughs> yeah so how would you like you're very bold and brave with colour where does that confidence come from um I think just I've, I've never felt like because I live on my own that's like the beauty of it I suppose yeah for me it's kind of I've never felt held back by anyone and I 
or anything. And I try and get other people to kind of just not think about what might be tasteful or what they think they should do at home. Um, so I've just kind of gone with it and actually it doesn't have as much of an effect on you as you think. So kind of people might think like painted ceilings or whatever, or historically those sort of things like might make a room feel smaller or might draw a space in. But actually when you start experimenting, um, you find that the down, it kind of has has a different effect. So I've kind of painted my hallway, the ceiling in there quite a bold colour. Um, and it actually makes the ceiling feel higher. Um, and I think because I live on my own, I am able just to experiment um, and not have the kind of, I'm, I'm not held back by anyone, as I mentioned. Yeah. Um, but I kind of want other people to do that as well. And also I feel like I've always dressed quite, um, I've always had kind of my own style. I don't really follow trends. I just kind of wear what I want to wear. So why wouldn't I do that in my home as well? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I go about it. Yeah, well, they say a home is a reflection of you after all. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I feel like taken from that, if anyone's got a partner who doesn't like the style, just get rid of them, not the house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would make life so much easier. <laughs> but I think like on that, if you are kind of in a relationship and you are kind of like, I have a lot of customers that argue in front of me or have those different <laughs> convers- conversations, but I'd say like, think about how you want a room to feel um I always say that anyway and I'm sure between your room to room you can kind of decide on the feel you want to create on a, in a room um, and then be led by that so if you want to create like a tv room or something I'm sure you can both agree that you want it to feel cozy so go deeper so it's always thinking about not necessarily how things look but how things feel and you should come to some common ground yeah how do you usually get like couples to compromise especially if like the polar opposites what's your best bet in terms of that because it is quite difficult yeah I think it I think having someone like me in the equation can help because I can I'm not as personally connected to each home so I can tell them what will work for them um I might have to take someone side more than the other (laughs) which uh, can be difficult but um yeah kind of a fresh pair of eyes can help um but yeah I'd say kind of just that feeling thing again uh, what I mentioned just strip it back don't kind of argue about kind of what your favorite colors are just think about how you want the space to feel so if you want the bedroom to be really like restful um which i'm sure you both do um then kind of there are certain colors which i can present to you which will help achieve that so it's not necessarily about i want it pink i want it blue or whatever um there are kind of things you can kind of go through to make sure you are getting the right feel together so other conversations to be had yeah (laughs) so I love that so that's the way you work then so you definitely get like sort of a palette together what represents them as well as the mood so would you say that's your design process yeah I think it's I'm always trying to strip out uh, people relying too heavily on trends or what the friends might have those sort of things and really getting down to the heart of uh, what makes those people happy or kind of how you want a space to feel I know I keep saying it (laughs) it's one of those things that I say all the time and people must be sick of it but it is just the best way to to go about the things because um if you get that right everything at home feels right yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. that should be your tagline (laughs) I know I think I've done like a million reels about (laughs) it already but yeah well speaking of your reels your reels are amazing they've done so well I found you in lockdown do you think Mm -hmm. you definitely sort of blew up then because I I think you did yeah I think obviously spending so much more time at home and just having the extra bit of time to create those reels but also I think kind of people began to realise well we're all at home, the effect that the four walls have on us and kind of home was everything when we was in lockdown. So um, whereas reels may have been more of a fashion led thing before, why can't we kind of do all these sort of things in the home as well? So that's why I started to tap into a little bit. And at first I were like a lot of home accounts, you, you see, are kind of reluctant um, to get on board with reels yeah. because home is so like aesthetic isn't it and we all love like pictures of really nice houses and that's what gives us inspiration um, but actually there's so many things at home that I think you can kind of bring to life in motion um, even if it's some of the silly stuff that I do like what it's like to live alone or kind of the downsides of open plan living and it's just kind of those daily details um, which we all experience when we live in in a place or uh, we own, own a home 
Um, so I kind of like to like mix the tip side of things with those kind of little comedy things, which um, tap into kind of a bit of a just just what it's like to be a homeowner or just live somewhere. Yeah, you definitely do mix mix through the the lot of them. You've got so many funny ones, and then obviously your style tips and everything in between. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of like. I feel like I kind of found my niche, and that did take a while. But I kind of go through like let's throw in a little bit of expertise because obviously I am a professional, and then yeah. let's throw in a little bit of comedy. <laughs> yeah, um, and let's. I obviously live in a small space, so I, I kind of like to talk about that. Um, and interior design doesn't have to be like big grand spaces and those sort of things. It can be kind of uh, living in a small space and making that your own. Um, so I like to bring that side of things to life as well. Yeah. How did you find your niche on niche on social media then during like lockdown? Because I feel like it was trying to find a bit of a needle in a haystack for home. A counter felt like we'd sort of not been very popular. And then all of a sudden, because as you said before, we're stuck on the four walls. Everyone wanted to know you, didn't they? That's right. Yeah. Um, I think it would just kind of with videos, it was more just experimenting and seeing what people respond to. Um, but I, th- I suppose I went through my own transformation during lockdown in my home anyway, because that's when it did start to dial up the colour, just because I was in the house so much more. I realised um, what effect it was having on me um, as I was working from home doing appointments. And then I started to bring that alive more online too so I suppose that's when I don't know my feed may have got a lot more colourful perhaps a lot less product heavy because obviously my page is a work page yeah um and yeah I just started to share like my home and then how I create my home I think it's about kind of like being generous um with your advice and your tips and not just presenting this is my room look how great it is not that (laughs) (laughs) mine is and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea but um sometimes like I've started to switch off to a little bit to accounts which are just perhaps um pictures of I don't know the same room over and over again or just homes where you know there's kind of like loads and loads of money behind it which is totally fine but um I kind of like to share more advice or just show you how a normal person lives and can yeah, make Yeah, exactly. The own. everyday person. Yeah. I know That's I, right. yeah. I feel a bit like that because sometimes it's very like either or, where do you find the middle ground? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you find like some people use the same photograph all the time and it's quite obvious. And then you've got someone who's got a multi-million pound mansion. That's just very far-fetched in the future. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you just need to find the like... You know, what you're working with John Lewis, you're, you're finding that everyday product for the everyday person, and that, that does lack sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, and I suppose it's kind of a part of my job as well is I'd like to bring John Lewis to more people. Obviously, people might have concept, uh, preconceptions of John Lewis, but um, I suppose I'm quite different um, to what people might think people who shop at John Lewis are like um and obviously I personally didn't grow up with John Lewis a lot of people kind of obviously it's very much embedded in the south and you know that sort of thing and yeah. we only opened in Leeds a few years ago um and I grew up in like a mining town um so I went kind of in a city kind of near all those shopping um kind of areas so I think it's interesting to see how someone like me uses John Lewis in the home uh, and obviously now we have the amazing like any day range which is kind of all the um really kind of affordable pieces with the same quality and I just kind of like to bring that alive in my own way and obviously we sell so much stuff at John Lewis it's nice for me to present just like a snippet of that yeah and, and kind of go into a bit more depth um with it so yeah that's what I really enjoy enjoy yeah. doing so how do you think like John Lewis has changed like what's your favorite part about that becoming for someone like the everyday person um I suppose um, obviously we have the quality at the yeah, heart of our definitely. products and kind of the service side of things, which hopefully I'm a part of. Of course. <laughs> uh, with the services I offer. Um, but yeah, just the surprising pieces, I think, because we're as a department store, we do sell so much. Um, you can kind of be overwhelmed by the choice, um, either when you walk in um, or when you're shopping online. But kind of I like to present some of the perhaps more surprising pieces, which are such good good prices um or the real kind of trend like pieces as well or the pieces that have a lot of color um i like to tease those people pieces out 
and shout about those, um, which people might find surprising. Um, yeah. Yeah, just like basically everything about John Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> it is a well-known brand, though. It is like, it's a brand that, like, sort of a home and heartfelt brand, but I feel like it has changed over the past few years because, as you say, it's kind of a bit like when you go into Selfridges, it's like, where do I start? It's kind of that mm. si- similar vision. Um, but I know from your page specifically, like, I love it because you work for John Lewis and, it, as I say, it might be a needle in a haystack find and stuff. So people go to your stories to find good quality John Lewis products. Um, mm-hmm. What's like your like favourite part about doing that? Like, because you are a brand, you, you're classed as a brand partner. Is that is that what it's called? Because I know everyone has a John Lewis page, don't they? Yeah. So kind of my job title is like home stylist. So day to day, I do kind of work in the store. Um, and do the appointment side of things but then kind of the page is just there and it is part of my job um, for me just to kind of present what I like and kind of freestyle a little bit with, either with our products or about the services we offer um, but I don't kind of try and make it over over kind of silly yeah. <laughs> that's not a word but do you know what I mean yeah. like, I suppose I kind of want to bring more of my advice and the service I offer to life um but then obviously I do kind of curate my favorite kind of pieces that we sell on there and I'll put those on the stories and obviously it's kind of just a new way of connecting with customers because I can work in the store I do work in the store and obviously I offer specific appointments but then I have this page online where people can dm me um, I do q and a's um I'll, I do kind of now this monthly thing where I ask someone to put in like a box kind of what um, piece of homeware they're looking for that they might be struggling with and again it does take a lot of time to sometimes navigate kind of homeware um, anywhere really um, so I kind of do the hard work for you I'll find a piece that I think is really good I obviously work with these pieces every day I kind of know the brands we sell inside out um, so I kind of do some of that work for you so the page is just kind of another way of um, serving I suppose. Yeah, no, that's a good way of putting it. I I used to do that when I used to wear a home sense. Like yes. it's sort of you're the middleman. <laughs> no one else yeah, has to do the right. hard work. Yeah, and I suppose I, I, there's no pressure from the brand for me to be pushing um, any particular sort of um, style or product. Um, obviously, we have kind of like seasonal campaigns and things, um, but I'm never told, "Oh, you must sell this." It, there's very much freedom there, and I'm trusted. To to kind of curate my own um, side of things and kind of do what I think is best on the page. Yeah, well, you can tell that from your page that it's very organic and your style's there. Like probably if you looked at someone who worked in a similar role in John Lewis, you'd you'd be polar opposites in what you would recommend. Yeah, and that's I think that's what's nice. We kind of all have our own style and um, our own way of presenting that. Yeah. So is that something as well, like when someone comes for an appointment, depending on the client, is that who it's matched with or is it literally just you'll roll with whatever? So kind of we work regionally. So obviously I'll see people in my region, especially if they're coming into store or home visits. But I suppose the beauty of the online and virtual side of appointments is that anyone can book with me now. So I have appointments with people all over the country. You might like the way that I use colour. Um, so it's very flexible in that sense um, but then I kind of I, I love doing that and I love kind of connecting with other people but I do still like kind of just the day-to-day things in store where I might meet someone who has a totally different style to me but that's kind of fun to work on as well yeah it takes you out your comfort zone that's right <laughs> <laughs> um going back as well to you saying about like working in John Lewis and Mm-hmm. Um, knowing all the brands and things do you find like since working there your brand knowledge knowledge is really heightened yeah I think I, I always notice it <laughs> with wallpaper brands because customers often come in store and there's like so many you know like different books to look yeah. through and they're like where do we start and I'm like oh that that brand does this style and don't look at that brand because that won't be your style and I kind of love that I've got all this knowledge that I've just subconsciously taken in yeah um but yeah you do kind of just just by repetition get used to kind of the different styles that brands have um and then you compare that quite nicely to to customers yeah definitely I love that I used to I feel like my brand knowledge for over the past few years has grown immensely do you get like yeah. an, 
do you get like an excitement or a buzz when like a new range comes out? I used to be like that. Yeah, I absolutely love kind of, even though I always tell people like don't follow trends, I do love like when the new stuff comes in. I <laughs> like trying everything out and I love seeing like all the new season photography and that feels quite exciting because I yeah. suppose it's just new product to work with, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say it's c- kind of inspiration. Even if you're sort of it not going to buy the homeware that's in, you might buy something that was 10 years old, but it's still online or do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just kind of like a whole new palette to play with in a way. Um, and the designs get like, I don't know, braver every season and there's fun pieces being thrown in. So I, I love all that yeah. too. Well, you'll definitely yeah. love that with your love and colour. I think brands are yeah. getting more <laughs> like keen to be brave. <laughs> that's right yeah yeah and just kind of more characterful and I suppose that's because people are being braver at home so it's just a response to that too yeah that's actually yeah I didn't even think about that you're you're right like that's probably why brands are being more bold because I don't think they're they're as afraid like when fashion brands bring out a new collection they just they just throw it on the shelves as where homeware was very muted and now we're going back to being a bit more I don't know a bit more wild (laughs) That's right, yeah, and I think it's it, it's just about kind of making your home a happy space for you and it's nice to have a product that you can do that with that kind of feels so personal um, rather than just kind of, I don't know, a standardised kind of set of products. Um, and people do shop differently now, like they don't buy ranges of things. Yeah. You know, like they won't buy a suite and kind of matching chairs, like everything's very individual. And I kind of love um, that side of things too. Yeah, it's a bit more quirky in that sense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, if people are very much trend-led, how do you think they can sort of wean the way f- away from that? Because... Sometimes, as you say on social media, when you go on, everyone's house looks the same. <laughs> How would you like recommend people weaning off trends, like as a whole? Not obviously they're there for a reason, but yeah. finding that personal touch. I suppose you kind of have to approach trends um, in a sense, not as kind of the thing that you should do. It's just the things that's out there at that very time so kind of rather than thinking I must kind of replicate that sort of style trends instead are kind of just showing you what's the zeitgeist of the time I suppose Um, and whether you want to kind of buy into that a little bit that's fine but I suppose cost trends like develop season to season obviously not as much as fashion but you still kind of get autumn winter spring summer in home it's not sustainable to keep, you know, flipping pieces. Um, So I'd kind of like invest in pieces and do all the background work. Um, The things that I do in appointments with customers, all that background work of what really makes you happy, what colours really make you happy, um, what shapes, patterns, those sort of things really make you happy and have that as your fundamental core. And then if you do want to mix in a few trend pieces now and then, just, just keep things fresh or trends will come along that you do love uh, you can do that kind of in the accent pieces but um have a really solid understanding of um what makes you tick so you can kind of stick to that and not be swayed too much every time a new trend comes out yeah I know I feel like people find it hard especially as you're saying then like it's not sustainable to have like fashion flips every season but we're home where it's definitely not sustainable yeah, that's right. And you can't kind of buy a new sofa every season. Well, no. some people might be able to, but you wouldn't want to. You want to kind of get get that piece that you absolutely love and you, you want to keep. Um, so on the bigger things, um, it's about kind of finding really what suits you, suits your body, um, that you absolutely love and that you will love for a long time. And then maybe you can kind of just change a few pieces here and there. Yeah. It's like a investment piece furniture. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, kind of um, getting those pieces right and understanding just kind of like your own palette as well. And that will change over time. But I suppose I, I fell into the trap. I was guilty of it, seeing all of these like beautiful kind of neutral homes. Yeah. Once, I, want, I want a bit of that, but then it didn't work and it didn't feel right. <laughs> and I knew the second I painted my walls, this stony colour a few years ago that I'd done the wrong thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's we're all guilty of it, but it's just kind of, you, you do kind of get more confident with your own style and 
are able to say no <laughs> uh, when the trends come along. Yeah, definitely. I think people cannot be like judged by others because I know for a fact if someone had something in the house and it was like years old, they'd be like, ugh. But how would you like not be bothered by others' judgment, would you say? I suppose this is the thing that I want people to address all around anyways, kind of your house is yours. So don't be influenced what other people say because you're the one that spends time in it. And I do find sometimes your customers might think, oh, my friend mentioned this wouldn't like that. And I say, well, your friend doesn't live there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. like this is your home. So, I mean, I have quite a strong taste, but I generally, genuinely wouldn't be bothered if someone said, I really hate your home because I like it and that's yeah. all that matters. So I suppose it's just, I want to give people the confidence to do what, they want to do at home because it's theirs <laughs> exactly um, yeah so it's like building you're there as well to build confidence amongst the four walls so to speak yeah yeah hopefully that's yeah. what that's what my mission is oh I love that <laughs> yeah so what has been one of like your favorite projects then that you've ever been involved in off the top of your head um Oh, so many, <laughs> especially kind of like over lockdown. I've seen so many kind of like multiple customers a day, to be honest. I suppose my favourite ones, it might not be a definitive answer as such, but I really like kind of the return customers that I get. So customers that may come back um, in a few years time for a different room because I feel like I built up a relationship with them and it's really nice that they want to come again and kind of access my advice and um I also know them a little bit and I can push them a little bit more and perhaps try something different. So I really love it. Like when a customer returns, it's, it feels like a compliment to me. And I feel like we've already got a simpatico kind of built up. Um, yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah, well, that's nice because at least, you know, you've done a good job that they want to come back. No better compliment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So do you prefer colourful schemes, neutral or whatever? You just create a flare comes out anyway. Yeah, I, I suppose um, I actually love like occasionally working on a neutral scheme um, just because it's so different to what I do in my own home. And I love kind of, I think with neutral schemes, you have to be um, cleverer with texture um, and those sort of things. And I love that kind of detail of that. Um, sometimes it can be harder to make look interesting. Um, and I like that challenge. But yeah, I kind of genuinely, I like working on any sort of, um any sort of interior style even though i have my own here in my own home um with customers i can i'm very adaptable and i love kind of just bringing what even if whatever they want is so wacky um as long as it makes them smile i'm i'm not bothered <laughs> yeah you're with yeah. yeah i like as you said before though i like doing something that's not what I'd go for because I'm able to be a bit more experimental but aren't you because it's not yours as well yeah definitely it's it's nice to flex different muscles yeah exactly I love that yeah. Um, yeah. as well I wanted to talk about the fact that you did um Dr Alex's space as well that was amazing oh, yeah. seeing that on social media so how did that come about and how did that go um so that came about I work with kind of our comms and press team quite a lot so like write commentary and stuff about trends or kind of how to um to use certain pieces in the home so I, I do work quite closely with that team as well um and dr alex was kind of collaborating with john lewis um so i helped him with his studio um which is kind of his hq i suppose for his brand and his business and then i helped him with his flat too um so we kind of did a virtual appointment i got to meet him virtually and then kind of i brought kind of those ideas to life and it was such like a cool project to work on especially in his HQ because he wanted the um colors in there to represent his brand colors which were like this really interesting mix of teal like a minty color and an orange so like a really interesting palette and it was nice to kind of have that to start with and then just build that into pieces um and I think it came together quite nicely no, it looked amazing. I loved it. I loved the way oh. as well you shared on social media the process behind it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's nice to do too. And as well, I suppose I showed like the brand colours and then how kind of it went through mood boarding stage. And obviously I spend a lot of time like behind the scenes looking at things in person as well because that's so important. Obviously with design 
um, seeing things in the flesh. But yeah, then I kind of put it together digitally, presented it to him. Um, he loved it. And yeah, it just went from there, really. It was really great to work with. Oh, wow. Sounds amazing. Yeah, I feel like yeah. people just see the end thing and think, oh, that must have took them five minutes. And it's like, mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> it took ages. Especially if you want... Um, when you've got a reputation, uh, you kind of need to make sure things actually go. If you're just working from behind a screen, like when you see those pieces in the flesh, it's like, oh no, that does not look right. Um, so I do spend a lot of time, you know, like working with samples and making sure things go in person just so, because that's that's what you live with at the end, isn't it? Not, yeah. not with what's on the screen. Were you nervous for it to sort of be published? Um, I was kind of excited to see it come together because it, it actually kind of the design process and the signing off process were quite quick um and again I worked mainly for his HQ with our any day range so it was more kind of like an edited um an edited selection of products um, which sometimes can be more of a challenge even though there's less um because it's just kind of teasing out the right products from that um but yeah it was just really nice to see that him smiling in the room and yeah it sounds yeah. fast yeah. so Obviously, you've told us all about your job and things like that. Is there anything future-wise that you're thinking, what's next? What's next for you and your job or your socials? I think social-wise, it's just kind of keeping on going with the reels and kind of bringing new ideas to life and more tips, I think. Um, although those videos take up much longer, <laughs> um, I suppose they have the real value um, there. Career-wise, um, I'm, I'm still loving what I'm doing. I've loved it ever since I started it. Um, I do want to do some more writing. So I want to fuse, like, bring writing back into my job, do some more interiors writing. I do write kind of like a monthly column for the Yorkshire Post. So obviously that's local to me. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to do kind of more, more of that. And I suppose I bring my tips to life on video. I'd like to do it more in print and in text as well. Yeah. Oh, boss. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll do very well at that. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, so at the end of the podcast, we have a segment. Um, I'm sure you've heard it all before. It is mm -hmm. our holy show and guilty pleasure. So what is something that you can't bear in design? What would that be for you? Um, I suppose you don't want to. <laughs> <But> <laughs> you can upset a few, a few people. Things, but I think <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, what I'd say probably is based on what we've discussed I suppose I really don't like the competitive side of interiors and that can be on a smaller scale so not necessarily kind of like on social that can be on more uh, a local level to people so it's where homes become about who's got the best by fold doors and who's got the most expensive kitchen um that sort of thing really doesn't interest me because again I think you're making your home about someone else and comparing it to someone else's when really it should just be about kind of what makes you happy. So that's probably quite the diplomatic response. No, that's a boss response. <laughs> no one's ever spoke about that. I love that. That's so true. That you see it a lot on social media, comparison, and you see it in people's mm. homes as well. And people get bogged down and think, oh, I haven't got that, that, that. But really, it's, it's not about that, is it? No, no, it's not. And even for the people who have that, maybe they'd be happy at home if they removed that from their own kind of yeah. psyche as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, I think it works for everyone if you kind of get away from that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's made me die of it, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's your guilty pleasure? Something that you shouldn't like, but you do. Um, there's probably quite a few things, but I, I suppose that I'm not guilty about this, um, but I suppose people expect from me kind of colour and pattern but actually I actually really like plain things <laughs> so I suppose like I'm not actually that guilty about it but people might think I should be um so I really like you know just like plain curtains plain fabrics I'm not massively into loads of pattern even though I'm into colour I like kind of plain paint colour walls I love kind of like linen or velvet yeah. curtains that are plain I wouldn't want like a big blousy sort of pattern on a on a curtain um so I suppose I'm into that side of things more than um I suppose I'm not really a maximalist people might think I am in terms of the, my use of color but I'm not with kind of the use of pattern yeah um so I suppose I'd say that 
even yeah. though I'm actually not that guilty about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, people think you're the king of colour and really, you know. That's fair. <laughs> I don't want to use the yeah. <laughs> um, and we also have an audience question this week's is quite interesting so it was if you wasn't in your job now what would you be doing I suppose I'd be still writing <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah I'd probably, yeah I think I'd, I'd, I'd be I know that's a really boring response because it's what I used to do but I'd still be working as a writer um, would there be something else you'd want to do what have I wanted to do in my I'd, I'd actually love, even though it's kind of on the same path as what I'm on, I'd love to do like magazine styling and, and things like that. Um, so more set styling, just because you get to work with all those new pieces a few years in advance. Yeah. <laughs> um, and kind of be, and if I had the skill, I've, I don't have the skill to do this, but I'd love to be like a product designer because I love like, I love how they work like two years in advance and kind of shape kind of the products I, I speak to people who are in our design studio quite a lot um at John Lewis and I find it fascinating that uh, a sketch becomes a product yeah I just don't know how to do it at all <laughs> <laughs> so in maybe in an alternative world if I had the skills uh, or a train to do that that's what I'd be doing well maybe watch this space you don't know maybe in two years you'll have your own range and I'll be like well remember we said on the maybe. podcast <laughs> maybe I'll reinvent myself <laughs> yeah definitely oh thank you so so much for coming on I will leave all your socials in the show notes and if you want to get booked in with yourself and um, tell people what they can do if they want to get booked in with you now whilst you're on the easiest way is probably just the link in my bio I always have the link in my Instagram bio um for people to just to jump on and book an appointment with me but you can kind of send me a message as well and I'll I'll tell you how to do it brilliant well all your tips are on instagram as well if you need any hand in that yeah that's right they're all up there mixed in with a few silly uh, <laughs> silly videos <I> love <laughs> you it. should be able to find them yeah you definitely will <laughs> oh thank you so so much for coming on will i really appreciate it no thank you for having me it's been really nice uh, and great to chat to you